In January, we went to Japan and we flew business class there. We stayed in luxury hotels on points the entire time. That flight probably is 15,000 if paid for out of pocket per person round trip. So it's probably like 20 some or 30,000 for just me and my husband on that flight. And we do four of those trips per year. We're saving over 100,000 every year. And that's just flights, it's not including hotels because in December we are flying Q suites like Qatar Airways business class over to Egypt and so that's a eight to ten thousand dollar flight one way for each of us and that's on points. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the Marvin Francois Show, your number one source for all things business, finance, and investing. And today huh, is a very special day because our guest today is the creator and host of the Geo Breeze Travel Podcast. She's your travel hacker's favorite travel hacker. Matter of fact, if you've been anywhere in the country and booked a flight or a hotel to go somewhere, whatever you paid, I promise you, she's paid at least more than half. She paid less than half of that. But don't worry. By the end of this episode, you'll know exactly how to do the very same for yourself by yourself. I'm here with the one, the only. Ms. Julia Menes. How are you? I'm good. And that was one of the best intros anyone has ever given me. I, tr I try my best. I try my best. I'm extremely excited to have you on here. Uh, um, I, I, am, I am extremely excited to get into this because, you know, as of late, a lot of the guests that we've been bringing on to the pod have come by way of referral. So in terms of I've always known of you, but what's super duper funny is I don't think we ever, you know, truly got connected. Um, I had a friend who went to a mastermind that was hosted by a good friend of mine, Carter Cofield, shout outs to him, and uh, my guy, George. And I'm at home, I'm working, I'm knocking some messages out, and out of nowhere, my phone bings like 18 times, right? And it's, it's a friend of mine who's like, listen, I don't care who you got next on your podcast, you need to book this woman to come on here and give the game, because she just taught me how I will never, ever pay for another flight or another hotel. And I said, say less, we got to make it happen. And lo and behold, here we are. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Most definitely. And also, I also did a little bit of research. And I think we talked about it before the recording. You're actually Filipino. I am. Sca yep, proud Filipino. Scale of 1 to 10, how good is your Tagalog? I am really good at eavesdropping. Okay. My accent is something where if people from the Philippines are listening to this podcast, they will laugh at me. Okay. Um, but I am very good at eavesdropping. Got you. There you go. There you go. I'm working on my I'm working on my tag along my all I know is Maga Dangu Maga. After that it gets a little fuzzy. So foggy foggy, excuse me. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We are here to talk any and all things travel hacking. But of course, before we do that, I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself. So let the people know who you are, where you're from, what you do, and how you got your start. Hi, everybody. My name is Julia. I am the host of the Geo Breeze Travel Podcast. We interview people from all walks of life about how they can use points and miles to travel for next to no cost because I think I got into the podcasting thing a couple of years ago and at that point pretty much everybody who was talking about points and miles online was a guy and white and probably tall and I'm none of those things <laughs> and they were all bloggers and I hated writing I was like well what if I just did the opposite of everything of that so i'm already short and i'm already a woman and i'm already not white so we got like three for three on that and so i was like well what if i just like interview people on a podcast or make video content instead of written content and instead of focusing it on like here's everything that i do because everybody it seemed like was so afraid to link to each other's channels because of like the whole like what if they use somebody else's links to apply for a credit card instead of mine and i was like well, what if we just do the opposite of that? Instead of just focusing on my stuff, I'll just feature a new person every single week so that if the market were perfect and anybody coming to my channel could just discover everybody else, then hopefully they find somebody that they can relate to. If that's me, that's great. If it's not, then hopefully they find somebody else through my podcast that can teach them the game as well. There you go. And ever since you've been rocking and rolling. Yeah. Got you, got you. So what? So talk a little bit more about what exactly led you into, because we all travel, right? But there's a big difference between traveling and travel hacking. It's, it's two completely different games that we're playing here. What exactly led you into the travel hacking space? So one time um, my husband told me, hey, here's some personal finance blogs that I think you would enjoy reading. He was not aware of how much I would enjoy reading these personal finance blogs and how deep down the rabbit hole I was about to go. So as I was reading all of these, like Mr. Money Mustache and Go Curry Cracker, Mad Scientist, all of these back in like the 2017 era, 
a lot of them were mentioning that they could travel for free using points and miles that they earned from credit cards. And I thought, oh, that's a scam. That's definitely <laughs> a scam. And there's no way that that works. But I kept hearing about it over and over again. So I thought, well, okay, maybe we should look into this and like get one or two cards. So we got a couple of sign up bonuses. And the way sign up bonuses are usually structured, you get like 70,000 points or so once you spend $3,000 on the card. So we were traveling to Morocco and we just bought a cheap cash flight from um, Colorado where we lived at the time to Morocco to Spain back to the US and we just paid for that with money so we met the minimum spend that way. Well, about 20 hours before we were supposed to board for our flight, our tour guide who was handling everything except for flights, he was handling hotels and excursions and airport pickup and transportation around Morocco. He called and said he had to cancel on us because of a family emergency. So we've got about 20 hours before we're about to land in Morocco. Mm -hmm. We'd never been there before. And we had no plan once we landed off the plane. So I was like, well, okay, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. So I like Googled how to get free hotels with points. And I'm reading a script from some blog, calling American Express and being like, hello, I get free hotel room. Yes. Um, and then they were like, yeah, you have enough points for three nights at the Sheraton Casablanca. And I said, perfect. We're just, we're going to go with that. And I will figure out everything else in the, in those three days. Mm -hmm. So we got approved for three rooms and they gave us a confirmation number. And the whole time walking up to the hotel, I was like, this isn't going to work. We're going to be homeless in Morocco. <laughs> but we got there and they were like, oh yeah, you have status from the credit card so we gave you an upgrade you have free breakfast you have free cocktail hour and from that point i was like oh we are never going back we are absolutely never going back to the way that it was mm -hmm. so after that i've earned some more points on some more cards and i was like well how do i keep this going long term and eventually i realized that the way to get a lot of points is to do business credit cards but i didn't have a business at the time so I didn't realize that people can get business credit cards just by selling on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or Uber driving or Instacart delivery or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we got to start a full fledged business. So I started a travel agency just to get a couple business credit cards. I went like wow. full deep dive, full on mode. And I got a couple clients through the travel agency, but I hated it. Mm -hmm. And every time somebody was like, oh, can you book this hotel for me or something? I was like, you know, you can get it for free right? with points and miles. So I just kept telling people, I was like the worst salesperson ever because I was just like, you can get it for free. Just get this credit card. And then the pandemic hit. So I used that as an excuse to just close down the travel agency. I was like, I don't like doing this. It's a perfect excuse to be like, no more travel agency. Right. And that's what all the GeoBreach travel paperwork and business filings were under was that travel agency. And so I had all of that already filed, but I didn't want to do it during the pandemic. So I said, well, let's just make content about points and miles since that's what I like talking about anyway. Mm -hmm. And I did not expect that to be monetizable. I was just like, oh, I have business paperwork and now I can just like get my business cards and get a lot more points and miles and go from there. Mm -hmm. And it was the pandemic. So I was lonely and wanted to talk to more people about how they did their point secrets. I wanted a lot of free consulting from people without paying them to tell me like, what are your point secrets? So eventually I was like, do you want to just jump on zoom and like, I can record it and we can, we can share it with the internet, I guess, to give you some exposure. And people were like, Oh, are you starting a points podcast? And I said, yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. We're starting a points podcast. Do you want to be on it? And we are like 140 episodes in at this point. So it's just kept going and I did not expect it to turn into the, the large business that it is now, but here we are. Here we are. And you are educating hundreds of thousands all across the country about how they can essentially travel for free, right? Or pay little to nothing compared to what they were probably paying before, which is huge. To provide some context here, to let people know that you're not new to this, you're true to this. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how many cities and countries to date at the time of the recording of this episode uh, you've been able to travel to and, you know, just some of the different, just, I guess, how much, whether it's money, money you've saved or how much points and miles you've leveraged in your ability to do so? Yeah. So if anybody's watching this on video, I have the scratch map behind me that's everywhere that I've been. I, I stopped keeping track after about 30 countries, but we've been... 
We've been all over um, Australia, China, Russia, all over Europe, Central America, Peru, Ecuador, obviously US, Canada, uh, Morocco from that whole story, Spain, Germany, all of that. So more than 30 countries. And these days I don't, I'm really bad at tracking how much I have saved in total, but this year alone, in January, we went to Japan and we flew business class there. We stayed in luxury hotels on points the entire time. Um, that flight probably is 15,000 if paid for out of pocket per person round trip. So it's probably like 20 some or 30,000 for just me and my husband on that flight. And we do four of those trips per year. So yeah, we're saving over a hundred thousand every year. And that's just flights. It's not including hotels because in December we are flying Q suites like Qatar Airways business class over to Egypt. And so that's a eight to $10,000 flight one way for each of us. And that's on points. Goodness gracious. God almighty. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited already. I can't wait. We, we got we got to get into this because, you know, this, this is about to be game changing, especially for me, because I don't travel enough. I'm trying to get into traveling. So I want to learn from the travel hacking specialist herself. And I want our audience to learn as well how we can do what you do as many times as we need to, whether we're going to Japan, Morocco, you know, uh, 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 Brazil, Italy, doesn't matter. Right. So let's 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 dive right into it. Right. I want this episode to essentially be a travel hacking masterclass. I want to really unpack this thing from top to bottom. So, you know, you mentioned credit cards earlier. We can start off with that. If I'm interested in learning how to travel hack the right way uh, and I'm just getting started, right? I'm starting from ground zero. What are some of the best credit cards that I can go out and apply for that are, are very travel hack friendly? So the short answer is that the most popular starter card is the Chase Sapphire Preferred mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. The Chase points can transfer to a lot of different transfer partners that are really useful. So Air Canada, Virgin Atlantic, British Airways, all of those. A lot of people, unfortunately, just redeem their Chase points through the Chase portal where they're getting 1.25 cents per point. It's not what you should do. That's not how you make the most out of your points. You really want to leverage those different transfer partners. But as far as the best card to get, I would actually not start there. I would start with working backwards and figuring out first, where do you want to go? So there are so many different possibilities in the world. And one of the best ways to figure out where do you want to go is to just Google the word sweet spots, like points and miles, sweet spots. If you already have a bank of points that you're trying to figure out how to use, you can Google capital one sweet spots, Amex sweet spots. This is the keyword that a lot of points and miles bloggers are SEO optimizing for but we just forget to tell everybody that that's the secret word that you should type into Google and that's where all the articles are linked to. So if you look at different sweet spots for where to use your points, that's gonna give you a lot of ideas for where to go. But also, sometimes you wanna go somewhere where it's not necessarily a sweet spot with points. I'm Filipina, so a lot of people ask me through Instagram, hey, what's the best way to get to the Philippines on points? There is not a good direct route from the United States. There is a free website called flightconnections.com and if you go to flightconnections.com, you can see all of the direct routes from a particular city. And if you type Manila in there, the only direct routes they have to the United States are with Philippine Airlines, which isn't a transfer partner with any of the good credit cards. But you can connect through Taiwan and fly Eva Airways. You can connect through Singapore, fly Singapore Airlines. You can connect through Japan and fly ANA or Japan Airlines. So figuring out what routes are available to you is going to be a way that you can figure out the best way to do this on points. In addition to flight connections, you could also search for the Wikipedia page for the airport. So if you just search Google for Wikipedia Manila airport, every airport has one of these free Wikipedia pages. It'll tell you every single route that's operated out of that airport, which airlines operate it and what cities those airlines will connect to. So that's another way to figure out all your routes as well. There are different tools out there that will tell you like Google flights, hey, if I wanna go from airport A to airport B, what's the best way to do that with points? Um, there's PointMe, there's Award Logic, Roam.travel, R-O-A-M-E.travel is a free one. And you can just type in, hey, here's where I'm trying to go from to, what's the best way to do that with points? You wanna make sure that you're figuring out what routes to search for first using Flight Connections or Wikipedia, because it's not gonna give like, suggestions of, oh, you search Manila to Los Angeles, but maybe search for 
this in two steps, maybe do Manila to Singapore, then Singapore to Los Angeles. It's not going to know to tell you that. Right. So that's why it's good to do flight connections first. And then the nice thing about Rome.travel, point me and all of those is it'll also tell you where to move your points and what kind of points you need and how many. And sometimes it's going to tell you really weird things like you should move 87,000 points from Amex to Air France to fly Korean Air to the Philippines. Like that's not intuitive at all. So that's where a lot of these different tools and a lot of points influencers and talking to an actual human about points can help is to figure out these non-intuitive patterns. And then once you know where you wanna go and who flies there and what route you wanna fly and how much it's gonna cost in points and what kind of points you need, you let that determine what credit cards to open because you don't wanna just start opening a Hilton card or a Marriott card or a Capital One card or any other card just because you saw everybody talking about it on Instagram right. because spoilers, people talk about the cards that they're paid to talk about. So that's there not you go. always, it's not always the best offer for you. Even if it is a good offer in general, mm -hmm. it's not always the best offer for you. So it's best to kind of work backwards and figure out, okay, how many points do I need and what kind of points would be best and let that determine what card you get. Are you trying to leverage your personal credit to get business credit or business loans, but keep getting denied because your personal credit isn't where it needs to be? Takeoff Financial can help you restore your personal credit so that you can leverage it towards getting the funding that your business needs. So click the link above or below this video so that you can schedule a free consultation and see how we can simplify your finances and your life. Okay, now we're getting into it. All right, so with that being the case, and you kind of talked about it before how... Um, you know, a lot of times what most people do, they'll get cards that offer certain points and they'll leverage those points directly in the, uh, I think, the credit cards portal. And not all the times is that the best thing to do when we're trying to maximize, you know, the travel hacking that we're going about trying to do. So what are the best cards when it comes to, you know, things like merging points or working with different uh, travel partners or even transferring points to some of these travel partners? The best ones are going to be the flexible points currencies like Chase. Amex, City, Capital One, and Built. For anybody who hasn't heard of Built, it is a new card on the market, relatively new, and it lets you earn points by paying rent, so without any fees. So that's a really nice perk about that as well. But then you can move all of these different points to about a dozen different programs each. And there is this super complicated Venn diagram of who transfers where. The best airline programs that accept a lot of different flexible currencies are going to be Air Canada, I think accepts everything except for City, Singapore Airlines accepts everything except for Built, British Airways, it's like four of the five, I think they don't accept City, um, Virgin Atlantic takes all five, Cathay Pacific takes everybody except for Chase, what else is in there? Those are the major ones. I might be forgetting one or two. Air France and KLM Flying Blue take all five. So those are the ones where if you can figure out how to move your points to one of those that I just mentioned, then you can get a lot of other cool flights that way. And I know that I didn't mention anything for United or American Airlines or Delta or Southwest, which is like where people tend to actually fly, especially domestically in the US. Right. But with United, Built and Chase are the only ones that transfer there. With American Airlines, Built is the only one that transfers. With Delta, Amex transfers, but I really wouldn't recommend moving your points to Delta. And then with Southwest and JetBlue, it's just Chase. So what do we do at this point? This is where airline alliances really come in handy and where we kind of get into level two because you can book United flights for cheaper than they charge on the United website by going through Air Canada or Turkish Airlines. Mm. You can book American Airlines flights often cheaper by booking through British Airways. Mm. And you can get Delta flights sometimes cheaper than Delta charges on its own site by booking through Virgin Atlantic. So knowing what airlines partner with each other is a very complicated art and science that a lot of points people are trying to demystify for everybody because that's how you get a lot more out of your points is knowing the optimal partner to go through very huge very very huge because once again to your point even before i sat and spoke with you i never really heard anyone break it down like that you know you essentially you're saying it's it's a lot more than just okay apply for a card they give you x amount of points and then you just use whatever points they give you to go ahead and book flights right it's a little bit more due diligence going all the way back from figuring out where you want to fly to 
reaching out to some of these different partners and seeing, you know, different ways that you're able to leverage these points beyond just transferring them over to that credit card portal and, and booking a flight. So that's very huge. To dive deeper into the points, um, I'm not a huge credit card guy, so I'm going I'm to I'm rely on you to kind of help provide some context and information on this. On For the little bit that I do know about credit cards, um, one big thing that I've learned is like not all point systems and points are created equal. So and you kind of talked about it a little bit earlier to where it's like, you know, you have certain credit cards to certain travel partners or transfers where it's like a one to one ratio. Some of them is like a one to one point twenty five. I think I read an article somewhere that right now for this year, at least built has like the highest, you know, uh, return on like, you know, point to, to reward ratio, whatever the case may be. Could you talk a little bit more about that and the importance of understanding that when we're, you know, doing a lot of our research and due diligence into structuring, you know, uh, plans to leverage travel hacking to get to some of these places for absolutely nothing? Yeah, you're absolutely right that not all points are created equal. So if you ever Google how much are my points worth, there's a lot of different articles like by the points guy, view from the wing, frequent miler, and a lot of other blogs where they try to estimate how many cents you can get out of each point roughly or what you should aim for. So with the flexible points like Chase, Amex, City, Capital One, Built, you're usually going to get about two cents per point. So if you are to move some Chase points or Built points into Hyatt hotels, for example, if you are moving 20,000 points, you can reasonably get a $400 hotel room out of that. Wow. But Hilton points or IHG points are not worth nearly that much. Those are only worth about half a cent per point. Mm. So I don't know if I've seen a $20,000 uh, or 20,000 point Hilton room anytime recently, but that's probably only a $100 hotel room instead of a $400 hotel room. So looking at those different articles and just seeing hey, how much are my points worth and what should I aim for is a good guideline. I do try to dissuade people from getting weirdly obsessed with cents per point because then people start hoarding their points. We can get into this a little bit, but they're like, oh, it's like 1.87. So I'm just I'm just not going to go to France. <laughs> like, it's still a really good trip. Right. And it's it's still way better than the one cent per point or 1.25 cents per point that you would be getting through the portal. So Sometimes I just like to remind people, once you cross a threshold of good enough for your points, just go ahead and enjoy the trip because there are a lot of influencers who really, really are into the maximizing game where they're getting 10 cents per point or something, but that might involve taking the weirdest possible itinerary all over the world, which just isn't a reality for a lot of people who do this as a, a hobby, a very light hobby. Right, right. There you go. Okay. To dive more into that, right? I know a big way for us to leverage a lot of these, a lot of the point systems that come with these credit cards are the welcome offers, right? I know, for example, Amex is one of the more popular ones. I think, you know, they have uh, a couple of different offers to where it's like if you spend ten to $15,000 or like nine to 10, some, somewhere in that range, you get a welcome bonus of 100,000 points. Chase has a couple of different offers like that with a couple of their different cards, right? Uh, my question is, let's say we apply for some of these cards. We get the bonus. We use the points that come from that welcome offer and we're essentially back down to whether it's zero points or just uh, much less than whatever else we whatever we started out with. Are there different ways for us to now leverage these cards to, you know, maximize on our spend, you know, to the amount of points that we get? Or we essentially just tuck the tuck the card away until we have another large purchase coming up to where we can now get, you know, somewhere up to around that same amount of points that we had to first start the card off? Yeah, so the largest amount of points that you will earn per dollar of spend is usually going to be that sign up bonus, but there's an app for this. So plan A is you should just use whatever card you're working on minimum spend towards, make sure you're hitting that sign up bonus, getting that big, um, big influx of points at the very beginning. But plan B, there's a free app called Card Pointers mm. and you don't have to give it any of your financial data. You just type in, here's the cards I have, here's what I'm trying to buy. And it will tell you, hey, out of the cards that you currently have in your wallet, here's the one you should use on groceries. Here's the one you should use on gas. Here's the one that you should use for online shopping. So that helps to kind of keep everything organized so you, you don't have to always put those little stickers on your cards, especially with something like the Chase Freedom Flex where it's rotating categories right. every quarter. So the Card Pointers app saves me so much brain space on keeping everything organized and trying to figure out what card to use for what. 
But then also there are different ways to maximize the special bonus categories on each card because certain cards do specialize in different categories. The Amex Gold is great for food because it gets four points per dollar on groceries and dining. Chase Inc. Business Cash for business owners out there gets five points per dollar on internet cable and phone and office supply stores. So if you wanted to run to Staples and get a whole bunch of like Home Depot gift cards if somebody's business is refurbishing houses or something, you can go to Staples, buy a Home Depot gift card, pay with your Chase Inc. Business Cash, and then you'll get five points per dollar. Mm. Versus if you went straight to Home Depot, you'd get one point per dollar. So that's another thing you can do too. But there's also this website, chase.com slash my bonus. I don't know why Chase doesn't just email blast everybody to like remind them of this because it would get people to spend more on their cards. But a lot of Chase cards have hidden bonuses that you can activate every month or so where you can get 10 points per dollar on gas sometimes. And you just have to click activate. And then it's supposed to incentivize you to use your credit cards more. I don't know why they don't just like tell people, hey, this month you've been targeted for 10 points per dollar on gas because people use the credit cards more. Um, they'd get more interchange fees, but I guess that's up to Chase's marketing department. But anybody, anyway, any, everyone should just go to chase.com slash my bonus. Beautiful. I think the reason, well, well, if anybody who's followed me for some time knows how I feel about Chase is bougie. You know, what? from the 524 rule to a lot of other things they got going on, I don't understand a lot of how they have things structured, but I mean, if that's what works best for them, that's what works best for them. But that's a huge gem in terms of, you know, because I didn't even know that. You said 10 points per dollar on gas, but it's like a it's like a rotating, it's not like a set thing. It kind of like changes from time to time, correct? Yeah, they'll target you for different offers. So it's kind of just like you get different coupons in the mail, but you have to remember to check the mailbox and you have to remember to activate the coupon, except it's all digital. And they don't tell you that your mailbox is located at chase.com slash my bonus. But yeah, I've gotten 10 points per dollar on gas before. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's five on home improvement stores. Sometimes it's five points per dollar on amazon.com. So if you have your chase cards, I would just go through every month or so, just like check all of your cards, see if anything is eligible for any increased um, bonus points for that month or, or quarter. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, so now we've started to really break down, right, how to go ahead and start getting into this travel hacking space. We're not just going to go out and apply for cards willy-nilly. We want to reverse engineer, figure out where we're going, start getting in contact with a lot of these airlines and travel partners that we're looking into. Then from there, starting, then from there, figure out the cards that we can apply for that best match where we're trying to go to, right? So we have that game plan set. So now let's say we we followed that plan step by step. We have the cards. We're, we're booking these flights. We're booking the hotels. We're ready to go ahead and travel. One thing that I see a lot of travel hackers post about constantly on social media, right, is whenever they're getting ready to go on a trip, whether it's domestic or international, I'll see someone post on, a, on their story. Just got upgraded. You know, I, I didn't even I didn't have to do anything. Just got upgraded from economy to first class, economy to business class, and I didn't have to do anything. How can I go about doing that? I don't I don't want to stay in the main cabin. I want to be up front, my feet kicked up, sipping on mimosas, sitting next to somebody's rich auntie. How, how do I go ahead and get upgraded on some of these flights? So I would say that for international flights, it's much easier to just book business class outright than to try to get upgraded. I would very much recommend not chancing it. I would just find a good business class deal on points and go with that. Gotcha. Because you have to remember that Instagram is fantasy land and a lot of people are kind of lying and they just booked the business class flight. Gotcha. All right. There you go. That being said, for anybody who travels quite a bit, I get upgraded all the time on American Airlines for domestic flights. And that's because I have top tier status with American Airlines. I have executive platinum status. There are a couple ways you can do that. One is that you can fly a gazillion flights a year, which I'm not going to do like despite what the internet makes it look like I don't actually spend my life on a plane. So <laughs> American Airlines is nice because it's one that you can actually buy your way to status. I think that if you have the American Airlines card, it's 200,000 a year will get you automatic, automatic top tier status. Even if you've never even set foot on an American Airlines flight that year, you can get top tier status just by putting business spend or personal spend on an American Airlines co-branded credit card. And then it kind of scales down from there where you could fly half the required number of flights. But if you get 100,000 loyalty points, worst case, by spending on the card, like that 200,000 is worst case, then you could get top tier status that way as well. There are 
a lot of different ways to earn American Airlines miles outside of the credit card and outside of just flying a lot. So there's a thing called Basque Bank where it's like a high yield savings account, but instead of earning interest on the money that you park there, you earn American Airlines points. Wow. Just by putting your money there. You don't have to apply for any cards or anything like that. Just if you wanted to bank with Basque Bank, which is I think like a, an affiliate of Texas Capital or something, they're like a legit FDIC insured bank. Um, you can earn American Airlines miles for that. If you really like boutique hotels and you don't really care about earning hotel status, but you do care about earning a lot of airline points, then you could book hotels through rocketmiles.com and then just set your preferred airline to be American Airlines. You can earn a lot of points that way too. Uh, there's a lot of cheap Vegas hotels where you could book a Vegas hotel and never show up, but it's prepaid, so you pay them money and Rocket Miles gets their commission, you get your American Airlines miles, but you never even showed up to the hotel, so it's kind of just like a cheap way to buy points. So that's a, a hack as well. American Airlines partners with a lot of different programs. So if you have any basic status with American Airlines, any basic status with Hyatt, link up your accounts. Cause every time you fly with American Airlines, you'll earn some Hyatt points. Mm. Every time you stay to Hyatt, you'll earn American Airlines miles. So it just kind of double dips from there. Mm. There's shopping portals, there's dining portals that let you earn American Airlines miles as well. Um, these are specific to American Airlines, but almost every airline has a dining portal and a shopping portal. So there's a lot of different ways outside of credit cards and flying that you can earn these points. Beautiful, beautiful. And and to go back to the to the resource you gave earlier, you said it's Basque Bank? B-A-S-K, bank, B-A-N-K. Never have I ever heard of a bank that rewards you with reward points. And you said these go direct, directly to Amex? These go directly to your American Airlines. Got you, American Airlines. Miles. Got you, got you, got you. Goodness gracious. Okay. So when it comes to this platform, this platform is, is, is majority of the audience members that we have that watch this are entrepreneurs, right? So I know a lot of these credit products that we're talking about are more on the personal side. From your, per, from your experience being in the space, are there any credit products that, uh, I guess, business credit products that also favor ha travel hacking that you would recommend uh, that you could suggest to the audience as well? Oh, the business credit cards are where the big points are. Okay. So... Chase Inc. Business Cash is fantastic because of those 5X categories. And I know a lot of people are like, I don't spend that much on office supply stores. Like, how much am I really spending on cable, phone, and internet? But again, the gift card trick at Stables, if you do a lot of home remodeling and you need um, supplies from Home Depot or Lowe's, you can get, get gift cards there. If you're sourcing a lot of stuff from Amazon for whatever reason, you could go to Staples and get 5X on Amazon there. So Chase Inc. Business Cash is a fantastic card. Chase Inc. Business Unlimited also has a really good sign-up bonus and it has one, a flat 1.5 points on everything. So if you're like, I'm so overwhelmed right now, I just need like a good default card. That's a decent default card to get. And there's no annual fee on either of those cards. There's the MX Blue Business Plus, which gets you to points per dollar on everything. So again, a really good miscellaneous card. That's up to 50,000 points, sorry, up to $50,000 per year. So really good for somebody with a smaller business who's just starting out. There's no annual fee on that card. There is the Capital One Spark for Business, flat two points per dollar on everything, and there's no cap on that. No annual fee for the first year, then it goes up to $95 on renewal years. So those are a few that I usually recommend, especially when people are just starting off with their businesses. For anybody who's like a high roller. Come on now. There's, there's a couple different tricks you can do there too. One is to get an American Airlines co-branded business card because you can just buy your way to top to your status that way, get upgraded like you mentioned. An executive platinum is nice. Like the first class domestic isn't as nice as like the lay flat international seats that you see on Instagram, but it's still like a pretty big recliner chair and I think the better part, rather than the chair, is the food. The catering on American Airlines Domestic First Class is really, really good. They have like these cheese platters with brie. They have steak. I think I've had steak Come on a now. plane. <laughs> like ra cheese ravioli. They have like Haagen-Dazs Dolce de Leche ice cream, like 
the super fancy ice creams where like it looks it's like this big but it's like six dollars and it obviously free drinks and everything anything that you would want on the plane so those are nice to get upgraded especially if you are running through the airport and you don't have time to visit the lounge we can talk about lounges in just a little bit mm -hmm. but you can just buy your way to executive platinum status with american airlines if you have a larger business and you can just put a lot of your expenses on an american airlines credit card you can do the same thing with hyatt and the threshold even lower there if you have one hundred and twenty thousand dollars of expenses that you want to allocate towards a hyatt world of hyatt business credit card then you get top tier globalist status. That means you get free upgrades to suites upon availability. You get 4 p.m. late checkout, free breakfast for you and your family. Mm. And I think the best part is the guest of honor benefit where if you wanted to give somebody like friends, family, staff, somebody a points booking from your account, then they would be treated like they have globalist status as well. Even if they've never stayed at a Hyatt before, you just say, hey, I'm gonna make a booking. It's, it needs to be a points booking, it can't be a cash booking. But a points booking from your Hyatt account, if you have Globalist, you put somebody else's name on it, they are treated like they have status as well. So it's a great way to incentivize your salespeople. If you're like, oh, I really wanna incentivize my salespeople, but like, I just don't have enough to like up their bonuses or whatever, or like rewarding your assistant or just your mom or anything like that, that's a fantastic gift just by using points. Come on so now. those are a couple of cards that I would recommend for high rollers are the American Airlines and the Hyatt one. And um, for families, the Southwest Companion Pass is really, really popular as well. You could brute force spend your way to get Companion Pass. There's a couple ways to finesse it with just a couple credit cards and timing it correctly. We can get into that if you want, but that's another one where you can spend your way to status and basically get buy one, get one free flights for you and a companion for up to two years. Crazy. Listen, I know you said Instagram may make it seem like you live on a plane, but you actually don't. But the way you talk, and I might, I might, I may have to live on a plane myself. I may have to go book eight flights after this. I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I barely travel, and I want to travel now. This is this is really really good. I want to dive deeper into something you touched you touched on. Let's talk lounges because every single time I ever, ha ever I've ever caught a flight. I always see that Amex lounge somewhere in the corner, in the corner of my I don't have an Amex Platinum, so I can't get in there yet. And I'm just looking, and I'm just watching people go in and watching people go out. Um, as far as I know, they're one of the, I mean, if not the, they're definitely one of the the premier lounges out there. I think Built is starting to have a, I think they have like one lounge in like Houston, and they're starting to build a couple of different ones out there. Can you talk a little bit about the lounge experience as it pertains to just, you know, leveraging travel hacking and just making this experience even better than what it is? Yeah, so lounges are marketed as the oasis of the airport. You're away from the general population in a quieter area with nicer seats. It's free flowing, all you can drink, champagne if you want it. There's like a buffet, you, like all you can eat, you can eat food um, there. And they do range in quality. So I've been to some lounges where it's basically like make your own sandwich and they have a deli tray. There's not hot food, but you can grab like granola bars and sandwiches and snacks and things like that. And then I've been to some that were basically a, a luxury sit down restaurant experience. I think the best one I've been to is the American Airlines flagship first class lounge in JFK. There, it was like a three course meal. They had artisanal cocktails. Oh my goodness. What did I eat? Oh, there was like, I had a braised lamb, like couscous. They have, it, it won James Beard awards, like culinary awards. They have celebrity chefs who are making these. A waiter comes and like takes your order. There was a New York cheesecake. There was like this mushroom toast thing that had like the fancy truffle mushrooms, like the expensive ones, they had that. And so that was, that's not typical of lounges, but they had like that level of lounge. Um, a lot of them will just have a hot buffet. They'll have like a vegetarian dish, a chicken dish, a beef dish, and you can just serve yourself and a good assortment of desserts and drinks, free Wi-Fi, so that you can work from there as well. It is getting a little bit harder to find a quiet place in a lounge. More people are finding out about these different hacks to get in there. So sometimes um, I actually do just go to an unused gate and mm. Sign up for free Wi-Fi, eat my goldfish crackers, and just go buy an outlet, <laughs> and it's quieter there. But mm -hmm. um, if the lounge is nice, then it's it's a nice way to save on food. I know that a lot of people who travel with families or companions 
if you have the Capital One Venture X, I think that's the one that you were talking about, where they have the Capital One Lounge in Dallas. That's a nice lounge. They have really, really good food. They have a Peloton studio in there. They've got showers. Um, they have an Irish coffee slushy machine, and it's amazing. I actually try not to drink in lounges too much now because I'm like, oh, like I'll have some on the plane and I just don't want to be dehydrated or anything. But in Dallas, that Irish coffee slushy machine, I will always go for one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so good. And they, I think I had like five cookies when I was there last. They were just like these butterscotch toffee cookies. Like the, the chefs in the Capital One Lounge in Denver, or not in Denver, in Dallas are incredible with what they put together in this lounge. Signing up with Takeoff Financial was really the best choice for me. It allowed me to take control of my life. I know that some people may think that that's really dramatic, but it's not. I feel like credit is really important and signing up with them allowed me to understand that. I just wanna say thank you because I think that you guys have definitely allowed me to feel comfortable. You allowed me to feel liberated. You allowed me to feel that it's okay. It's okay not to have great credit, but it's not okay to stay in that situation. So thank you guys for embracing me and allowing me to have a new life. Head over to our website at takeofffinancial.com and let's get your credit score to the moon. Goodness gracious, you're getting me excited. You're getting me excited. I'm, I, I, I'm gonna have to book a flight as soon as we get off this Get get off this episode. We, we, are, we are getting into it. Another part of the, so we're talking about a lot of the glitz and the glamour and the fun stuff that comes with the travel hacking, but there, there are some, uh, there's some bumps along the way. Like, you know, if you've traveled long enough, if you've booked enough flights and hotels, you've probably at some point in time had a, had your luggage misplaced or just straight up lost, um, in the, in the process of getting to and from wherever it is that you were going to. I want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, is there, are there cards, um, and I think Amex has something that that works in favor of this. But when we talk about things like trip protection, right, things that cover, you know, luggage and, you know, misplaced bags and things like that. Are there cards that we should be looking into or just programs that we can look into um, to uh, provide additional value on this as well to make sure that when we're traveling, all of our stuff is covered and we're good to go from point A to point B? Yeah. So Chase Sapphire Preferred is one of my go to cards for this because and I forget the exact limits on everything, but they will cover things like lost baggage they'll give you like 500 dollars a day or something like that for um, covering hotel incidentals and everything if your trip is accidentally delayed or unintentionally delayed or canceled they can give you a trip cancellation insurance for that for anything that's not refundable they can cover hotel nights if you're stranded overnight so whenever you are booking flights use a card like the amex platinum or the or the chase sapphire cards that have these kinds of trip protections even if you're booking it on points, just by putting your taxes and fees on a card with trip protections, your entire flight is covered at that point. So always use a card with trip protections because yeah, they can come in handy for all sorts of things. Big delays, cancel flights, lost baggage. God forbid somebody like gets injured or something right. on a plane. Those are, if you need to be evac'd like helicopter wise, some of them will have coverage for that. So that's very handy too. But even if you don't have any of these credit cards yet, for any of your listeners who fly Delta a lot, here's a cool Delta trick to get a lot of points. So what, as soon as you land on your next Delta flight, pull up your phone and Google Delta late baggage. There's a form that you can fill out. And if it takes them more than 20 minutes to get your checked bag from the plane to your baggage claim, you get a free 2,500 points. You can do this every time. So, and it's per person. So if there's two of you and you each checked a bag, then you each get 2,500 points. It's not per bag, so you can't just check five bags, but you do get a free 2,500 points each time. And I would just do this speculatively as soon as you land, because if, you, if it takes more than 20 minutes, you get the points. If it doesn't take more than 20 minutes, they just deny your claim. There's not like a mark on your account right. or anything like that. And the next level hack is once you get Delta status, you can check a bag for free. You could check an empty bag for free. You could check an empty bag for free and get 2,500 points if that empty bag takes more than 20 minutes to get to baggage claim. Wow. Bring back souvenirs with it. Goodness gracious. We get into it. Okay, 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 okay. Let's dive a little bit more into, let's talk a little bit more about uh, hotels, right? And we, we touched on it uh, sporadically throughout, you know, throughout the sit down. Um, 
we've talked about the Hyatts and the Hiltons and the Marriotts of the world. From your personal experience, what would you say are the 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 best or what is the best absolute, whether it's hotel singular or hotels plural, when it comes to travel hacking and some different strategies we want to make sure that we're implementing in our travel hacking uh, uh, plan? Hyatt is the fan favorite because they still have an award chart. So Marriott and IHG and Hilton, which are the other three out of the big four, they tend to be more revenue based. So if it's more expensive in money, it's going to be more expensive in points. It makes it really hard to find those like outsized values mm -hmm. with Hyatt. They still have an award chart. So there are certain places where there's like a better than average or a worse than average redemption. So it's a little bit more fun to game with Hyatt and you can get Hyatt hotels starting at 3,500 points per night if it's a mm. category one off peak. So it's really easy to start getting free Hyatt nights. Whereas with Hilton, you're playing with bigger numbers. They give out bigger sign up bonuses. But if you're transferring like your Amex points over to Hilton, it's oftentimes harder to get those better values. Outside of Hyatt, there is something called the Wyndham Vacasa program where you could move your Capital One point over to Wyndham and you can book houses like VRBOs basically through mm. Vacasa.com. It starts at 15,000 points per bedroom. But there are a lot of like these huge cabins and stuff in like, Hawaii where it's $400 a night, but there's like only one bedroom technically, but three bathrooms. You can get the entire house for, it could sleep six or eight people for 15,000 capital one points. Crazy. So you could do that. There is a next, next level trick to this. Let's there do is it. a free game. There's a free app called the My Vegas app. You play free games. They hope you get addicted to gambling, but you just don't ever need to link money to it and so i just set it on autoplay when i want to play and it'll play like these free slot machine games and you get these gold coins for playing for free the gold coins can be redeemed for real prizes like free hotel rooms in las vegas free drinks food show tickets excursions just for like pushing a button and letting your phone like play games on auto spin you don't even have to pay attention to it you just like let it time out um and you do this once a day um, it takes probably a week or so of playing before you can get a free night at the Excalibur. So that's a way to get free hotel nights in Las Vegas. But that's level two. There's a level three to this. Let's do so, it. Let's go. Come on. You get me excited. Let's do it. All right. So once you get Explorist status with Hyatt, um, whether through credit card spend or some other way, or there's a way to, to backdoor this, but it's usually easier to get Explorist with Hyatt. You can go online and status match from Hyatt to MGM Resorts. Mm. That means you're going to get MGM Gold. You don't have to pay resort fees in Las Vegas. You don't have to pay for parking. You can skip lines for stuff. So then you have MGM Gold status. And when you book your free night through the MyVegas app, you get that night for free. They'll usually still charge you resort fees and taxes on top of that, which can oftentimes be more than the cost of the hotel room, especially on peak days. But if you have gold status, you don't have to pay those. Mm. So then it's totally free. And when you get to the Las Vegas hotel, like the Park MGM or the MGM Grand or something, make sure you tell the check-in desk your Hyatt number because you'll also get elite nights towards your Hyatt status for staying at that MGM property that they are partnered with. So to recap that, free nights just by playing this app. You don't need a credit card or anything attached to it. You don't, you don't even need a credit card. You just have to be over 21 to play this app, my Vegas app online, get free points, redeem them for free hotel nights and other things in Las Vegas, connect your Hyatt and MGM accounts online, because if you have Hyatt Explorist status, which is not that hard to get, especially if you have any credit card spend on a Hyatt card, you're going to get all your resort fees and all your other fees waived with MGM. And once you stay at that hotel, you get the Hyatt Elite Nights too. Julia, let me tell you something. You about to make me. You about to make me stop the show, and 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 get into your 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 line of work. This is this is. I'm starting to sweat. It's get it's getting to that point. This is getting crazy. Goodness gracious, gems on top of on top of gems on top of gems. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. And we're we're once again we're there are still so many different levels and so many different tricks of the trade that I'm sure we could definitely get into. I want to touch on another part because, you know, like I said, I'm tapped into a couple of different people that, you know, do travel hacking. But one thing I never hear people talk about, um, I hear we always hear about talks of flights and hotels. Um, but, you know, once we get to these places that we get to, we got to be able to move around. 
right? Uh, so we need we need to go ahead and rent a car. If we're not doing Uber or Lyft all over the place, we want to be able to get a car. And if I remember correctly, I believe that when you're, you know, uh, getting into these car rentals, there's also, you know, status and things like that that's associated with that. So can we talk a little bit about that? What are the different um, hacks and strategies we can implement when it comes to when we get to these places, we, we, we leverage the information to get this flight for free. We leverage the information to get this hotel room for free. What are some different things we can do when it comes to the car rental so, uh, side of travel hacking as well? So uh, I'm going to preface this by saying whenever my husband and I travel, we try to always stay in like the city center. Those hotels tend to be more expensive, but then we can walk everywhere. Or a lot of times, mm. nice hotels will offer a car service. If you ever stay at the St. Regis in New York, they have a Bentley, I believe, that will just drive you um, up to like 10 blocks away. Uh, they can't bring you back, but you just like they can take <laughs> me as far as you can. And then I'll like walk back. So, right. And then you try to go during like peak traffic time so that you're like stuck in the Bentley. So high end hotels have car service. That's the next level thing. But if you want to rent a car because you want to drive around or it's like in a remote area or something, if you have the Capital One Venture X or the Amex Platinum card, you get top tier President Circle Hertz status automatically. Just make sure you register for it. That means. You can skip the line. You can basically walk onto the lot and pick whatever car you want at that point once you have that status. So you could pay for a Kia Soul, drive off in a Tesla. That happens. <laughs> so you can do that. There is also a website called Auto Slash. So once you've paid for a rental car and you've done your deposit, it kind of does like a price tracking and it'll notify you if the price on the car you rented goes down, so you can just like cancel your reservation and then rebook it at the lower price. So you can do that too. Goodness gracious. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Julia Mena is came, coming through and absolutely blowing this thing down. I appreciate you greatly. If, you, if you're watching this episode and you see me on another flight, never ask me how much. I didn't pay anything. Thanks to this woman right here. You understand? I, I, I appreciate you greatly. Uh, I know, of course, we got to uh, get you out of here. But before we do, uh, just take a second, take a minute to let the people know where they can find you. And also just leave us with some closing words so we can uh, close this thing out. Yeah, so I mostly hang out on Instagram at GeoBreeze Travel. I also have a YouTube channel. So if anybody's just like, I'm so confused. I'm just, I'm so, so confused <laughs> on how to do any of this. I have step-by-step -step tutorials on the YouTube channel for exactly like how to navigate the different websites to find these flight awards. So check out the YouTube. I have my own podcast, the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. Uh, Marvin, once you've taken a really cool trip, we'll have you on that show. And we, we interview people who have taken cool trips on points. And we say, hey, um, for anybody who wants to recreate this type of trip, tell them how they can recreate it using points. So once you're there, we will absolutely have you on the show as well. Let's do it. And I have a free course for people. So if you're just like really getting started with this, you're like, what is the five over 24 rule? And how does this impact my credit score? How does right. any of that work? All of that's covered in the free course, all of the acronyms. I don't know if we dropped any acronyms that like we maybe just glossed over today, but all of those are defined in the free course, which you can find at geobreezetravel.com slash free course. And in that free course, there's also a hotel upgrade email template. So you don't even need any credit cards for this. It's just an email template that you can send to different hotels before you go especially if there's a special occasion like an anniversary or birthday. So you just fill out this template, paste it into an email, send it to the hotel. People, like hundreds of my followers have gotten really nice upgrades. There's, there's cake, there's balloons, there's <laughs> upgrades to sweets. Um, I think the, one of the first times we used it actually, we were in Hawaii, we had a free hotel certificate from Hilton. And so I was like, where's the most expensive hotel where we can use this certificate? It was the Waldorf Astoria in Maui. It was like a $500 hotel. That was the base room. That was the cheapest hotel room. But then I used this um, hotel upgrade email template and we got upgraded to a $900 per night suite. I swear I could see like three islands from the balcony of this hotel. And they wheeled in like champagne and local oh. Hawaiian snacks. It's like in a gated community part of the hotel. So there was free breakfast, there was like free cocktail hour, which was basically dinner. It saved us so much money because food in Hawaii is super expensive. And all that was free, just from a free night certificate and some some email words. So you that all of this could be yours. Listen, Julia, I appreciate you. Wait, before you go, you mentioned something. When you said, you said something about acronyms, what did you mean by that? You were saying that we, we glossed over that. Can you touch on that? I don't know if we did, but... Um, 
when you watch points people or read different blogs, a lot of people will be like, oh, you should get the CSP or the CSR or the CIBC or the CFF or the CFU or the CIBU or the CIBP. And that's just the chase cards. There's like tons of these. And okay. it's just like trying to read a foreign language and you're and it dissuades so many people from even getting started because everybody's already like deep into their own lingo. I don't think we did any acronyms here because I, tr I try not to go into acronym world, but a lot of people do online because they think it makes them sound smarter to completely lose their audience. I don't know. Um, but all of those are defined in the free course at geobreachtravel.com slash free course so that you can just like jump into these conversations and you're just like, I know what five over 24 is. There you go. I know what a CFF is. I know all these things. There you go. And I'll make sure that, that the link to that free course is in the description along with all of Julia's, con uh, not contact information, but all of our social media so that you can tap in. If anything that we touched on in this episode, maybe a little bit, you know, maybe you need to go ahead and run it back or you want to get in contact with her directly, her Instagram, all of her socials, and the free course will be made in the description. Julia, thank you so much. I learned a ton. I know the audience learned twice as much. And I want to thank each and every single one of y'all to tap into this episode. And if you haven't already, what are you doing? Listen, take a second. Take a minute. Take an hour. Out of your day right here, right now, to just go ahead and show this video, show this episode some love, whether it's a like on YouTube, a review on all of the audio platforms and beyond. And make sure that you tap into everything that Julia does and beyond. As always, I appreciate you greatly, Julia, once again, for blessing my audience with all this travel hacking game. Uh, as always, guys, my name is Marvin Francois. That is Julia Menez. Y'all have been good. We've been great. This has been amazing. And as always, thank you guys and God bless. Peace.